Welcome to the virtual open house that we're having here at the UW Communication Leadership. Um, I'd like to begin by introducing all our wonderful panelists that we have here on today. Uh, we have with us Ekin Yasin, who is our director, who's the director of the Communication Leadership Program. We have Anita Vernacrofts, who is the associate director. Uh, we have Jazz Espiritu, who is the head of program affairs with us. Uh, we have Heather. We have Heather Worker, who is the assistant director of academic services. We have Megan Herndon, who is a current student. And we have Tori, who is an alumni, an alumni fellow, and she'll talk more about what that means exactly when she gets to her part. So once again, thank you so much for being here, everyone. Um, and now I'd like to turn it over to Ekin to kind of start us off. Thank you, Kayati. Uh, and uh, we also have, I just want to acknowledge Kayati Mehta, who's one of our brilliant uh, graduate students. Um, who's helping us this year with some of our recruitment outreach and events, uh, a testament to the applied learning uh, that we offer to our students throughout uh, the year. So uh, thank you all for joining us. And uh, Kayati also will share a small kind of slide deck of sorts to just give you a sense of the uh, a visual cues about certain things that we're talking about. Um, so uh, before uh, we dive into the content today, I just want to welcome you all uh, to our virtual open house. Of course, everything, um, this normally is an event we host in person, and we welcome many of you uh, in our building at the wonderful campus of University of Washington in Seattle. Uh, well, even in Zoom, we're now in our own personal spaces we'll try to give you a taste of the community and experiences that we have in the program. So hopefully it'll make up for the uh, absence of our actual space for the time being. Um, so um, a couple quick items. Uh, again, this session is for communication leadership program and you may hear um, uh, others in the program, it's a graduate program um, housed, as I just mentioned, at the University of Washington, which is in Seattle. Uh, you may hear panelists uh, throughout the program, um, throughout today's session, refer to it as Calm Lead. Uh, that is a kind of a quick term that we use within the program for those of you who may not be familiar. And it's the umbrella that hosts uh, kind of two really exciting degree programs, uh, digital media and uh, digital media and communities and networks. Many of you may be trying to decide which degree to pick. So uh, feel free to ask us questions and you'll also hear perspectives about some of these key items uh, from multiple lenses uh, today. Um, I'm a, a couple, again, uh, basic uh, kind of information. Our program has been around for uh, now almost, oh, actually for two decades, uh, offering a really dynamic and applied curriculum uh, that leads our students to transform or launch their careers in a variety of roles uh, and, uh, and professions. Um, we uh, give our students the necessary communication knowledge, strategies, and skills to manage content, information, systems, people, and change. So a variety of different options of how to navigate the degree. And again, we can offer you more information about that as well. Uh, today's format is unique. Uh, we want to bring different perspectives by featuring staff, faculty, um, students, and alumni to answer specific questions in the program portion of our virtual open house so that the conversation is contained. But it's also a space for you to ask questions to us throughout the entire event. And we will have a dedicated Q&A session at the end of the program. But again, uh, we are on a webinar version of Zoom. So you'll see that there's a Q&A button down uh, where all of us uh, will be answering, but particularly uh, Heather Worker and Kayati Mehta, a graduate student and our assistant director of academic services, will be also entering real, uh, real time uh, to some of those. And uh, they'll also be keeping some of those for the Q&A section as well, if it's relevant for all or if it's a discussion uh, question. But we will have an opportunity throughout the session for you to interact with us. Uh, uh, let it be through the Q&A uh, feature or if you choose to also 
through the chat feature, which I will ignite in just one minute. Uh, so in today's session, um, we are going to talk to you about, uh, again, uh, specific questions. Um, so we're going to talk to you about how we ensure a meaningful connection and build community in our program uh, during and beyond COVID. Uh, and now uh, that uh, kind of part of the question will be handled by uh, Jazz, uh, our um, head of uh, program affairs, uh, who actually built many of these programs. And um, we'll also hear what it's like to take a class in our program, in particular what's happening in one of our classes this week. And uh, that'll be through uh, one of our faculty members and associate director, uh, Anita, uh, who will uh, give you that perspective. And then we will also uh, hear uh, the student perspective in the program through Megan, who will uh, actually share with us how, uh, what the decision-making process was uh, to pick this program. So how are uh, students, current students, decided uh, to choose this program over others or, or, or maybe other opportunities uh, in, that came about in their lives. And uh, last but not least, uh, Tori, our alumni representative, one of our alumni fellows, which is a fantastic program that we can tell you a little bit after. Um, our community is involved way before and after and throughout our uh, the entire lifespan of our program. Um, our alumni representative today will tell you how the degree uh, come into play to their lives, particularly professional lives upon graduation. Um, so uh, that's just a very quick introduction of the types of questions, again, that you'll hear in the more kind of structured part of the content. Uh, but um, again, feel free to send us questions uh, throughout using the Q&A feature predominantly, which will be answered live. Um, and I also see that many of you are already starting and igniting the chat feature, which we really love. Uh, so uh, feel free to now, I'll just pause one se a second. We would love to hear who you are, who's with us today too. So uh, please tell us your name and where you are now. If you wanna share an institution or an organization you work for, that's also welcome. But, but where in the world are you uh, right now? Uh, and who are you? Uh, so feel free to share with us uh, that in the chat so that we can uh, welcome you. Uh, and uh, and we can also you can also interact with others uh, that are participating with you in today's session. So I, I know that some of you uh, already have started doing so. Uh, so uh, I'm really, really uh, excited for that. One, a, a few more quick uh, housekeeping items. When you're asking a question, um, we quickly introduced ourselves and we'll be reintroducing uh, some of our panelists throughout the session. Uh, please mention who the question is directed towards. If it's a general question that you think anyone can answer to, feel free to not mention anyone and just post your question. But if you wanna hear more from one of our panelists and it's uh, within uh, beyond the scope of what they'll be sharing in their kind of question, assigned question. So feel free to do so. This is a really organic and conversational session as with many of our program. So I just want to move uh, quickly uh, to uh, why uh, kind of um, why calm lead matters at this moment in a more big picture way uh, before we dive into today's content. So uh, uh, let's let's um, kind of discuss um, uh, very quickly uh, a, a few questions and reasons and topical areas uh, that are I think program has been. Uh, really thoughtfully navigating for a while. I, we, I just want to acknowledge the uh, kind of transforming and uh, and novel realities we're all navigating. Of course, more so than ever, uh, it's really valuable to be in a space where you can think with others and prepare for the next steps of your career. Um, but one of the things that I really value about our program that has been, again, as I mentioned, has been around uh, for two decades is many of the essential things that we're thinking about are actually questions and uh, inquiries that we've been focusing on for a while through uh, the thoughtful programming and also through the thoughtful curriculum that we've been offering for our graduate students. Um, so um, indeed we are uh, navigating and we are going to see many changes in the work environment globally uh, due to the pandemic, but due to multiple crises that were faced this year. 
But every year, I mean, today, this year, of course, is exceptional in the, in, in the globally shared uh, and glo in, in a crisis that impacted so many of us, no matter where we are. Uh, but as a global program, I think uh, we have the type of responsive, uh, um, responsive space where we can always make sense of what's coming uh, in terms of communication content, ideas, and connections, and make sense of it collaboratively, no matter what the, uh, what the situation is or um, what's happening in the world at that given time. Uh, we look at that from a perspective of what happened before, what's happening now, and what's coming next. So I just wanted to kick us off, since we're going to focus on answers of questions, some questions I think that are really important that our program actually helps us kind of navigate, of course, this is amongst many, uh, but I think uh, the, I, I picked particular questions that we, we are really strategically uh, placed uh, to answer in our graduate program for professionals, uh, again, who are about to launch their careers or who want to transform their careers to kind of give you a sense of the types of things that we've been thinking for a while. And again, when I mention these questions, I just want to acknowledge that these are questions uh, that we answer in our curriculum through many classes uh, for almost the entire duration of the program. And uh, so in that way, too, you'll be able to see the responsiveness um, of our community. So one question, uh, so I, I just want to list those questions uh, before I turn it back over to Kayati and you hear uh, from the rest of our panelists is, how do we communicate during a crisis? Um, in this moment, it's, uh, it seems like that crisis may even seem permanent, but in general, uh, crises happen and communication during those crises is one of the most essential uh, interaction modes uh, or essential things that we have to make sense of. Uh, just imagine even in this context. Now, I think uh, many of us navigated personally, professionally, um, many questions that relates to how to communicate uh, when things uh, set a little bit away from the norm. Um, so we uh, indeed really very much appreciate this question and think about it in many of our classes. Um, the other one is how do you sustain, build, grow communities for movements, for people, for organizations all around the globe? Again, this is a question that really matters now because we are on Zoom to acknowledge where we are now, but and a lot of the hours of the day. But um, this question still resonates when we're in together. Um, uh, we look at the very much the structural and the DNA of how to build communities. And again, from multiple perspectives and by way of multiple uh, tools of media, communication and facilitation, uh, to name a few. Um, building of that, how do you connect with people? Uh, we are uh, very fortunate to be in a space where we're thinking about that actively. Again, it resonates in this moment. Uh, because we're constantly trying to reorient our content to this novel environment around the world, wherever we may be. Uh, and we're trying to rethink our events, right, as we've just done for this one, uh, and still be engaging and connecting with you in a personal level, which we take pride at. Uh, we want to we always hope to model what we hope to see in organizations, which is again creating deep bonds uh, and connections uh, amongst people and interactions, types of interactions uh, that really uh, cultivate uh, that sensibility. How do you resonate is uh, something we all think about in our a variety of different things that we do. Again, uh, this re relates to many sorts of professional communication activities. That's the subject matter uh, of our program. But in this moment too, right, in the abundance of content that you're uh, receiving uh, online, uh, particularly and predominantly uh, through a screen, how do you actually uh, kind of leave that special feeling, as it were, uh, with, with your audiences? Um, and then um, how do you build teams at work? We're, we're a program that uh, stretches through various practices that relates to communication. And we really take that also uh, at heart. I think this has also been a very relevant question at this moment, but this is an ongoing question that we try to answer is uh, internal communication practices, right? How to build and sustain teams? What are best practices? Uh, some of, we can dive into this, but we have uh, kind of, we ha before the pandemic, we we had a distributed teams uh, 
<laughs> class where, where our uh, very valuable faculty member uh, very much looked at how to kind of create those connections and, and valuable bonds and also collaboration to, uh, for effective outcomes in a distributed environment. Uh, that class uh, in, precedes uh, this moment and was not designed for the pandemic, but something we've been actively thinking about. Um, something that we've been trying to answer for now two decades clearly is uh, how do stories ignite change? Uh, you will be amidst a number of people who in some way tell, tell stories, let it be audio, let it be visual, uh, let it be in other ways that we are maybe yet to imagine through data. Um, so, um, and we have, we share this common sensibility of trying to understand how we can use uh, those stories, again, to uh, cultivate a novel environment uh, in our worlds, wherever th that may be. Um, and then, of course, as a program, we're very much committed to, um, unfortunately, it's still not a widespread and, and, and a shared sensibility, but we are 100% committed uh, to the urgency of making anti-racism a professional uh, sensibility and practice and a starting point for all sorts of organizations, wherever they, they may be, and for them to understand and cultivate that uh, for whoever may be a part of their organizations. Uh, again, that's a theme that we've been exploring for a while in our program. These are just some broad things to think about. I just want to you know, pause and for you to digest that. And again, we've been thinking about these uh, topics for a while now in our program, and we can talk to you about how we engage with each of them uh, in, uh, in particular uh, ways. Um, so, um, so please feel free to interact with us throughout. I'm going to now pause and turn it over to Kayati, who will introduce the next uh, panelist. But I'll be online like with the rest of our uh, panelists and we're monitoring the chat and then also uh, answering your questions throughout uh, during the Q&A session, but also in the Q&A box as well. So we're so glad you joined us today or maybe virtually through the recording that we're doing. Uh, just as a quick note to, to that this session is being recorded for uh, use uh, for um, those who may not be able to join us today. We'll share it with you um, and those of you who are participating, but uh, for others as well after uh, we cover today's session as well. Um, so um, feel free to interact with us. Uh, and if it's not live, send us questions anytime uh, through our emails or other means of communication. So uh, Kayati, it's back to you. Thank you so much, Ekin. That was a great, like, wonderful introduction to what all Comdeed has. And I feel like that sets us off very well for what we, we talk about next. So I'd like to now like reintroduce Anita for those people who joined us a little later. She's the Associate Director of our program. And uh, I think she wants, she's going to share a little bit about what classes at Comlead look like um, with us today. So Anita, yeah, go ahead. Thanks, Kathy. Uh, yes, I will. And I, I'll say generally, before we move to the next slide, while the suggestion for this evening was an excellent one that I spend a bit of time talking specifically about a class that I'm teaching right now, I want to use this slide just to introduce broadly that uh, as, a, as a program that is really committed to, to your development as a professional communicator, the vast majority of classes you will take at ComLead are seminar style. They will be likely 20 individuals or fewer. Uh, it, it really is important to us as a program that the kind of size that you get to engage with in a class and the kind of relationship that you can develop with a faculty member is facilitated by that, that intimacy that comes from a seminar class. And the faculty themselves are a rich combination of both uh, full-time professors at the University of Washington, be they in the Department of Communication, our home, or in other corners of campus, but also just a tremendous roster of professionals in the greater Seattle area who, by their own interest in taking their expertise and sharing it in the classroom, along with their very uh, robust professional lives, uh, really take the kind of topic, mat the subject matters that are deeply important to all of you that you, you come to grad school for, and they and they really weave tremendous classes out of that professional expertise. So it's, it's a wonderful mix uh, of those individuals that are that are shepherding 
your process uh, in, in engaging in the classes. And, and so just know that, that that's, a, that's a high overview and we can get into more detail, details of during the Q&A, but it's a, it's a tremendous mix of individuals that you would encounter uh, leading classes and also intentionally in that seminar style, one that you would engage with different cohorts of students as well. So you would be potentially encountering individuals who started ComLead before you or after you, depending on where you are in the program. And, and also the course roster is designed to accommodate a working professional schedule, but then also be one that somebody who's working more part time or wants to come to, uh, to graduate school full time would find rigorous as well. So it really is meant to be tailored to a broad range of um, a professional graduate student uh, desires. So I wanted to, to, to set that tone, but then as I said, I wanna speak specifically about a class that I teach in the fall that is one of the two required core classes, uh, ComLead 501 and uh, ComLead 502 that my wonderful director and colleague Akin teaches in the spring. And 501 is called Leadership in Communities. And Kyati, you can move to the next slide. Uh, I actually taught week number eight last night. So it's very uh, fresh in my mind. And these two core classes, they are the exception to the rule of the small seminar style. Uh, believe it or not, uh, co uh, cohort 20 is 106 amazing individuals in the Zoom room every week. And so Kyata, you can, you can move forward. Um, I wanna share the, the, the overarching design of COM 501 is it's an introduction, not just simply to the COM lead program, but also the way that we consider leadership at an individual level. And the architecture of 501 is built off the Declaration of Communication Leadership, which some of you may have encountered in poking around our website. There's a wonderful page devoted to it. And the, the essence of our Declaration of Communication Leadership are these seven tenets. And I will run through them quickly one by one because they really do create the, the flow for, for ComLead 501. The first is storytelling. And you can indicate with a little bit, perfect, Kyati, thank you. The second one is technology, the tenet of technology. The third is values. The fourth is responsibility. The fifth is community. The sixth is advocacy. And then the final tenet, not surprisingly, is leadership. And it was wonderful to listen to Akin uh, with her overview just now, because there were so many areas of intersection between the, the areas of emphasis that, that she highlighted and why when we designed the Declaration of Communication Leadership two years ago, these were the seven tenets that we chose. And, and to give you a sense of how 501 unfolds, weeks two through eight of our 10-week quarter, the University of Washington is a quarter system, so we have a 10-week quarter, weeks two through eight, each week is devoted to a particular tenant with the leadership tenant, the seventh tenant uh, being reserved for two weeks, week seven and week eight. And so this week was week eight and we encountered the leadership tenant. But every single week we engage with a particular leader that reflects the particular value of the tenant. So Kyati, you can go to the next slide and I wanna take you through the, um, the range of individuals that we, that we encountered. So the first was Rebecca Solnit, and I, I will say, because Heather rightfully pointed out in the, um, in the chat room, the Declaration of Communication Leadership, you can think about it as the Communication Leadership Graduate Program's value statement, our mission statement. I know there are a couple of you on the call that have a nonprofit background. This was our attempt at creating language to share with the broader community, both in the Pacific Northwest, but across the world, because we are, a, we are truly a global graduate program, that these are the tenants that we hold dear as a program and that we believe should be through lines in the curricular experience that our students have, in the extracurricular that our students have, and that these are a value set that we believe as communication leaders, when you go out into the professional world, these are values that um, will, will, will create the more just and inclusive and, 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 and the, the world that believes in the power of communication to bring about change. And, and so these tenets were a way for our program to articulate a core set of values that inform our curriculum, inform the way that we engage with the students and the community, and also inform 
the, the way that we really delight in seeing our alumni, our robust, and you'll be hearing from some today, um, that our alumni go out into the world and, and be the change makers that we know they are. So, so thank you for that, Heather. So these seven tenets are reflected uh, through these, these seven, actually it's eight leaders because we do leadership for two weeks. So we started off with the essayist and activist, Rebecca Solman. That was for the storytelling tenant. Then we moved on to week two and Baraton de Thurston, who is a comedian, a technologist and a writer for the technology tenant. Then we moved on to Caribbean chef and restaurateur Nina Compton for the values tenant. She's currently based in New Orleans. Then we moved on to educator and software engineer and current president of Ashesi University in Ghana, Patrick Awua. He was the responsibility tenant. Uh, we then moved on to Microsoft Research, uh, Jaron Lanier. Uh, he's both, I, I, he's, he's a technologist, but also a bit of a futurist, um, also a musician. And then we, before, let's see, the, uh, yes, thank you, advocacy, the, the sixth tenant, we, we had a chance to read and listen and watch the work of activist and agricultural economist Winona LaDuke, who's a member of the Northern Minnesota Ojibwe White Earth Nation. And then finally, for the final two that were part of the leadership tenant this week, and I'll talk about this, we talked uh, about uh, Reed Hastings, the CEO of Netflix, um, so businessman. And then for week nine, we're gonna spend some time with politician and native of New Zealand, uh, Jacinda Ardern, currently the prime minister. And so for week eight, just to give you a snapshot, the way that this class is designed is that every single week you read something that these individuals have written or that has been written about them. You watch something that allows you to actually observe their communication style in a visual medium. And then you listen to something that is, in, that is a, an interview or an opportunity to hear them express themselves in a way that is auditory for your consumption. So there's a chance to understand how they sound, appreciate their, their body language and how they convey their ideas in a video format, and then engage with either their writing or things that have been written about them as a way to understand the cultural context that these individuals represent and the kind of leadership that they represent when it comes to their particular field. Keeping in mind, as you probably observed, we look at a whole range of vocations when it comes to the way that communication touches all of them. Uh, and I'm thrilled that tonight I get to talk about the conversation we had about Reed Hastings just briefly, because one of the things that we do in the context of 501 is they break, uh, all the students break into small groups, one of the affordances of the Zoom room, and they are provided prompts to consider when it comes to these particular leaders. And one of the questions that uh, we had for the consideration of the students last night with Reed Hastings, I mean, think about Netflix, it's a global company, it has incredible reach, it's both entertainment, but you could also very much argue that it's a technology com company of tremendous influence. Uh, and the question, one of the questions we posed to the students last night collectively was, we're eight months into a global pandemic, what, do you think is, keep, is keeping Reed Hastings up at night? What is worrying him? What is he thinking about? What is he trying to strategize around? And so it's a class that not only asks the students to, to consider the communication styles of these individuals, the cultural context of these individuals, but it's also a class that asks students to extrapolate from that and then begin to discuss in community, in a learning community, the kind of implications that each of these individuals is facing when it comes to their particular fields, their particular challenges in a very immediate context of today. And at the same time, and this is really, I think the importance of why this class kicks off your graduate career, is it also asks you to do a fair amount of self-reflection. We learn a bunch by, by, by studying individuals, but we also would be remiss if we didn't ask each of you as you embark upon your graduate school career to consider what, it is, what, what, is, what is the purpose and the passion that brings you to graduate school and how can you define that and, and, and gain ever more clarity as you take advantage and move through the graduate program. So that's uh, just a nutshell in terms, I wanted to give you a little, a little peek into how 501 is designed and the kind of conversations that are happening around these, these topics in, in the classroom. So thanks, Kathy. Thank you so much, Anita. This took me right back to my 501 class last fall and all the reflections that went into each and every week and also the final portfolio that we all worked on. Thank you so much. Yeah. This was wonderful.
Um, just awesome. a quick reminder to all the attendees, once again, we have here uh, all the panelists, especially Heather, who is the Assistant Director of um, Academic Services. Uh, we're here to specifically answer any questions you might have, like it can point it out in the Q&A section or in the chat, whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, I just wanted to put that out there once again. Uh, we'd now just like to move on um, to uh, Jazz, Jazz, who is the Head of Program Affairs um, at Comlead. And he's doing a wonderful job kind of building our community and keeping it so engaged. And uh, we'd like him to talk a little more about that today. All right, thank you, Kiati. Hi, hello, everyone. My name is Jazz Espiritu. I'm Head of Program Affairs here at Comlead. I use he and him pronouns. Uh, a lot of the work that I do is, is team operations, but ultimately an, another piece to it too is kind of leading the charge in a lot of our student engagement initiatives. Um, and uh, just so you all know, while I'm here to provide you a brief overview of what the community looks like in Comlead, some of the best people that are going to be able to answer that are the students and the alum who've actually directly experienced the community here. Uh, so I, I'm happy to answer any questions and share with you some of the initiatives that we were taking on this year uh, and into what could look like what it could look like in the future. Uh, but ultimately, you've got some really great voices in here who can answer for you as well. Uh, Comlate's community is made up of students, staff, and faculty, each working together using their unique experiences to strengthen the community. Our faculty strengthen the community by bringing their expertise to the classroom. As working professionals, they're not only instructors for your course, but viable people to include in your professional network. As staff, we bring our knowledge and experience of all things Comlead and the resources we offer, as well as the University of Washington. One huge goal for us is that you graduate, but while you're here, we want you to use your time effectively and efficiently. And lastly, as you can see from this photo here, as students, you all bring your personal and professional experiences, as well as your drive to learn. While we all make up parts to the community and contribute to what makes it strong, it's ultimately grounded by you as students. And I wanted to share with you this photo specifically. This photo is from cohort 19's orientation. Now, uh, you may not know this, but back before 2020, people used to take photos together like this instead of screenshotting Zoom meetings such as this. Uh, while we are not in a place to be making to do to be doing photos like this, uh, I can tell you that Comlead is working very hard and very diligently on building connections uh, that are innovative uh, and long lasting when uh, when it comes to community engagement. In years past, community was strengthened in the classroom, as well as events such as orientation, social hours, first Fridays and other connections outside the classroom. While entering this year of COVID, we've gotten more intentional about connection for students. Earlier this year, this looked like weekly social hours over Zoom led by our associate director for students to gather and connect about anything and everything. Now those social hours eventually became a series of student-led presentations revolving their art, hobbies, and passions. We called that our comm lead. This, uh, uh, we moved orientation online uh, this, this current year and focused on smaller group interactions so students could get to know their peers. Other uh, initiatives that we've, um, that we've established this year is we've established a peer-to-peer -peer program to connect incoming students with returning students who hold the same career aspirations, experiences, and or salient identities. Another thing that we've also implemented is our very own Discord server. So for any folks in the gaming community, know what that is. Discord is essentially a platform similar to Slack, but it's all about building community. In, our, in the Comly Discord server, we share photos of our pets. We talk about class registration. There's textbook exchanges. We um, recently, Kiati and I and a few other students had a rousing conversation about what are the best boba spots in Seattle. Uh, another thing that we can also do in Discord is listen to music together, which is uh, something that we're slowly establishing as well. All of this is what makes our community strong. We are driven by each other, and we are a community with various backgrounds and perspectives and identities, and we aim, we aim to celebrate that. And so that's just a brief overview of what our community is like and what makes our community strong. But it's really hard to do that without actually, um, without sharing those direct experiences. So um, I'm going to stop there, but please throw in your questions in the Q&A section because I would love to answer that as alongside our students and alum. Um, with that, I'm actually going to go ahead and pass that back off to you, Kiati. Thank you so much, Jazz. The Boba discussion also reminded me of the beginner Spanish speaker meetup that happened through Discord. That was another interesting event that happened. Um, so yeah, there's a bunch of things happening on Discord with comedy. Um, 
talking about current students and all the discussions and events we're having, I'd like to now move on to Megan, who would like to share what her experience as a current student looks like at Comlead. Thanks, Kiati. Um, it's really exciting to be here and to uh, be talking to some future, hopefully, Comlead students. Um, and I'd just like to share a little bit about why I chose Comlead and my experience with the program. Um, so what really drew me to the program, um, I actually went to UW as an undergrad where I studied journalism and marketing. Um, and then after I graduated, I worked at a startup marketing agency for about two years. Um, and really what Akin was talking about earlier with telling stories that spark change and uh, creating content that resonates with people. Um, I really felt like I wasn't doing that in my first job out of college. I felt like we were doing, you know, we were creating content and we were doing social media, but a lot of the time it just felt like we were sort of checking boxes and meeting quotas um, and not necessarily, you know, really telling good stories or, um, you know, creating content that really helped our clients meet their goals. Um, and what really made me interested in Comlead was this uh, sort of these three areas of focus, storytelling, leadership, and strategy. Um, you know, I wanted to be using my background in writing and storytelling to really do effective work, um, you know, work that was driven by strategy, that was driven by goals, um, and to really just have a deeper understanding of how to do uh, really effective content marketing and storytelling. Um, and so I looked a little bit deeper into the Comlead program and the more I learned about it, just the more excited I got about it. Um, I was already living in Seattle. Um, I love Seattle. I love the city. I love all the nature things around here. Um, I also am, I currently work as an editor for a company that does healthcare writing. Um, and we do a lot of science communication work. Um, you know, Seattle is really well known for the tech industry, but the healthcare industry here is also huge. There's a lot of biomedical research and healthcare innovation. Um, and so I really was interested in staying here and um, really diving deeper into that area of work. Um, you know, I was really interested in all of the courses, courses about content marketing, about storytelling, really, um, you know, chasing those opportunities to dive deeper into those areas of study. Um, and it was just a really feasible program for me to do, as I believe Anita was talking about earlier. You know, you can't do the program one class at a time. You can work full time and also do the program, which is a really good fit for me. Um, I've just been doing one class at a time, also working full time, and that's just been really manageable. Um, you know, it also meant that I didn't have to take out a ton of loans to be able to do the program, which, um, you know, just really fit kind of my needs. So um, that's sort of what brought me into the program. Um, and so I've been in the program. This is my going on third year now. So I'm cohort 18. I've been in the program for two years and had the chance to really take a bunch of different courses and really seen how those different courses uh, really apply directly to my career and to what I'm doing at work every day. Um, just to share a few examples. Um, one uh, course and program that I really enjoyed was the content marketing course with Misty Weaver. She did an amazing job at pivoting that course online, like peak pandemic. I feel like we all still got so much out of it. Um, but she really breaks content marketing down to a science. And she starts with, okay, who are you talking to? How do you figure out who your audience is? And then how do you learn, you know, as much about that audience as you can to create effective content that really resonates with them? Um, about a month after that class, we had an audience research, I was able to apply that to two of my different clients at work. Um, and it's been really helpful. You know, it's so cool to learn something in the classroom and immediately take it and apply it in the workplace. Um, I'm sure you guys have all heard the word storytelling a lot tonight, but that's another big focus of mine and another big skill set I've really been able to develop through Comlead. Um, uh, one of my other favorite courses was Lauren Kessler's Principles of Storytelling class. And what my favorite thing about that class is, is that she takes storytelling beyond just, I guess, telling a story, but how can you do it in the most effective way for your audience and to really make it meaningful for that audience? Um, and especially when we're talking about stories for, you know, a brand or a nonprofit or a cause, you know, anything like that. Um, it was really helpful to break down storytelling um, a bit more to like, how do you figure out who your characters are? Who's the hero of your story? Um, a lot of different things like that. So that's also been just a really 
effective um, class and one that I've really been able to apply to my work. Um, you know, additionally, Jazz talked about the community, but it is really such an incredible community here at Comlead. Um, you know, the professors are so supportive. I have a really cool network of peers that I've gotten to know through this program. Um, and one of the, the other things that really uh, drew me back to the University of Washington, really, because I went here for my undergrad as well, but UW is just a big school with a lot of opportunities and they really encourage students to, you know, explore what they're interested in. So, you know, it's sometimes that means taking a class in a specific area, but um, we're also encouraged to do independent studies and pursue our own ideas if that's something that we're interested in. Um, so uh, last summer I did a, a independent study diving deeper into science storytelling um, and looking at effective ways to um, tell stories about science and use storytelling to make science more easy to understand and re uh, resonate with non-scientific people. So I interviewed a number of journalists and authors and marketers, various people who communicate about science and use uh, stories to, or uh, use uh, stories to communicate about science. Um, so that was also just an opportunity for me to dive deeper into something that I was really interested in learning more about. Um, I think that's about it for my end. I'll hand it back to Kiati. Thank you so much, Megan. Um, I see a few questions about the current student experience in the Q&A section as well as the chat. So while we get to the Q&A session, we like Megan and I can definitely try and address those as best as possible. But just to let you know in advance, in case we don't have enough time, we do have separate info sessions specifically targeted where we have a couple of current students come and talk about their experience for the whole hour and then they answer all the questions people have about it. So please, I will be sharing a link later, but please also feel free to come join one of those where you can ask the questions and kind of have a deeper discussion with current students. Uh, and uh, a couple of those are also focused on international students. So if there is anything that's specific to an international student experience, we, we like love addressing that as well in those sessions. So just putting that out there. Now we'd like to move on to Tori, who is our, our alumni and alumni fellow, which like I mentioned, she will talk about in a bit. And I'd like her to share her experience and what she thinks about Comlead and how that has transformed her career. Yeah, absolutely. Um, hello, thank you guys so much for having me. It's so nice to be here and see all of your faces again. Uh, I've been out of the program for, gosh, I don't know if it's a year or two, well, a year and a half or two years or so, but it feels like I'm not gone because I still, do all of these things with you. That's super fun. Um, so I'm on two devices. I have audio through one and video through the other. So if you just see a picture of me and like want to not see a talking head, you can poke through and see um, I'm actually a real human talking to people. And I do apologize in advance. I have noisy dogs that like to bark at people walking by. Um, so the question that I was tasked with today was how did the degree come into play for my life after graduation? Um, and how did it transform my career? So I came into Comlead in the middle of a career transition. So I started out in science. I was a marine ecologist and a fisheries ecologist, and I was doing a master's in um, lake trout spawning behavior. So I was, I was studying the movements of these fish. Leonard, please, Leonard, stop. Uh, I was studying the movements of these fish and like inserting trackers into them, like th surgically following them around, analyzing all this data, doing all this amazing data visualization, communicating about that stuff with all kinds of different people, people who were interested in donating to the lab, um, government officials who wanted to know more about the migratory patterns of these fish. Um, and I loved it, like science was really cool and it was my passion. However, my favorite part of what I was doing was the storytelling part. Um, it's where I excelled, the, the synthesis and the crystallizing of information. And the more that I got into it, the more that I realized that that's really what I wanted to do. And so I came to Conley to pursue a career in science communication. Um, that was my whole goal. I came in guns blazing, super excited um, to work with our partner program that year, um, which I don't know if we've talked about partner program yet, but it's just really incredible. Um, just so many different opportunities to do client work um, with local organizations and businesses and things like that. And through that process, and I started taking some classes in Comlead and like uh, Megan was talking about a moment ago, is there's so many opportunities to explore things that you have no idea about and really expand your breadth of understanding of what communication means essentially. 
Um, and it completely opened up my idea of what communication was. I took a content strategy class because I had heard a bunch of people use that word. I did not know what it meant, no idea. Like I come from a science background, I'm in a lab. Um, so I took that class and was completely hooked on it. Like I was absolutely obsessed with the organization, the synthesis of information, the idea of taking something big and unruly and complicated and trimming it down to just the core nuggets of the story that needed to be told in order to help people um, engaging in a digital experience to do what they wanted to do. Um, and I loved it and it was super exciting. And from that class onwards, I took every single UX and content class that was offered um, at, at Comlead and um, annoyed the heck out of all of my professors with lots of messages and like, please come to coffee and talk to me more about this and things like that. And it was just really lovely um, to discover something new that I was so passionate about and that dovetailed so well with my existing skill set. So I know a lot of you are either coming from uh, straight from undergrad or are in the middle of a career transition yourselves. And this is just like such an amazing opportunity to hone in on the skills that you already have and then pivot them to where you want to go. So Comly is not at all about like erasing like what you've done um, and learning something completely new. It's about taking what you've learned and like completely, you know, making it go in the direction that you're interested in going in. Um, and I wanted to touch on a couple of different areas of Comlead that I think really helped kickstart my career in that direction. Oh, and first I'll tell you that, yes, I am a UX content designer now. Um, I left Comlead actually three uh, months before graduation. I got a job at Microsoft um, at Power BI, which is their um, data visualization software. So kind of like perfect dovetail of my old science data background and my new content design and UX passion. Um, which I was so excited about then, and I'm still two years later really pumped about it. Um, so that's where I am now. And I wanted to talk about some elements of Comlead that helped me land that job and helped me um, move into the career that I was really excited about. One of them, which is sounds like a little thing, but it's really pivotal, is for people coming from a career transition um, or people coming fresh out of undergrad or you have a, a gap in your resume of some type, portfolio work is such a hard thing to get a hold of. Like there's always like five to seven years of experiences, like rich portfolio required to apply. Um, I didn't have anything because I didn't even know the terms UX a year before I started applying to jobs there. So the fact that a lot, the vast majority of the classes at Comley that I took had um, concrete deliverables that were portfolio pieces at the end of them. Some of them was one big, really shiny, important portfolio piece. Some of the classes were like five to 10 little bite-sized ones that you could you know, slice and dice however made the most sense to you. So that was a huge value add from the program that the class, I mean, obviously it's a professional program, but the classwork is set up to help you create portfolio pieces so that by the time you graduate, you're ready to go, even before you graduate in a lot of cases. Um, so that's one thing that I wanted to touch on. Uh, another one is that so many of the classes have guest speakers. Not like the class themselves, like the, the entire course, but the individual classes. One of the classes that I took, I think with Ian McGuire had a guest speaker in almost every single lecture, which was so incredible to see the breadth of, um, breadth of applications to the theory that we were learning um, and also learn way more about the day to day. So a lot I found, especially coming from science, I don't know about other backgrounds, in undergrad, it was so much theory, right? Like it's so much learning about these big concepts, how it works in the world. It, it's a lot about like expanding your brain and how you think. And there's so much of that in Comlead as well. But on top of that, they're giving you the practical side. Um, it's what does this job look like day to day? How does it actually work? What are the soft skills that I need in order to do it well, combined with the tactical um, and technical expertise that I need? So that side of things was really incredible, having all of these guest speakers to learn from. Um, and a lot of them became my mentors. So I kept in touch with people that I met in class. I sent them a LinkedIn message, we got coffee, and they were completely pivotal um, helpers for me when I was in the process of applying to new jobs. Uh, I had never done a salary negotiation before. Science, there's not a lot of salary there. Um, and that was, I didn't know what to do. And I had a lot of help from the people that I'd met in Comlead and that was amazing. Uh, there was a lot of networking advice that was given. So just really great connections made through guest speakers in different classes. Um, and in addition to guest speakers, there's also all of the extracurricular events, talks and conferences that, that Comlead puts on. 
Um, there's constantly a talk or a panel to attend. It's commonly just so focused on developing a rich network for its students. Um, as well as providing a ton of different settings and opportunities to learn. I think that's huge. Not everybody learns in the same way. And in Comlead, you're not just learning in class, you're learning in panel discussions, you're learning in you know, social happy hours where you're having these social discussions with people. Um, it's just like, it, it provides lots of different ways to intake and digest information. And I think that that's pretty incredible. Um, oh yes, and as an alumni fellow, I obviously have to plug our extensive alumni network. Um, so as when my team is hiring on Microsoft, Comlead is the first place that I go. We've already hired five Com leaders, and I've been there two years. Um, and I do that because I know that the people in this program are of a caliber that's out of this world. They have all of the skills and, you know, uh, tactical and theoretical knowledge that they need to excel in this field. Um, and so I know I'm doing that and I see in our alumni Facebook groups and things like that, people are constantly posting jobs and making connections with each other. Um, so it's, it's just really nice to have that community. Um, and as the leader of the alumni fellows right now, I am leading a group of amazing alumni who are offering workshops um, of various different skill sets to the Com Lead community and also some fun social time as well. So that's been really fun to work on. So that's a group of people that's always available. Like if you ever have any questions about the student experience, the alumni experience, please reach out to me or any of the other alumni fellows. Um, and the last thing that I wanted to say, I don't know if I'm over time yet, I'm so sorry if I am, uh, but your Com Lead career does not end when you graduate. Uh, you're in the program for a few years, but you're in the community for life, and you'll always have access to this amazing network and all of the incredible events put out by the program. So that's another little ROI perk is it's not just two years. You keep coming back and keep learning, um, and it's just really incredible, and I can't, I can't vouch for it enough. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tori. Thank you. Um, but now what I'd like to do now is kind of stop sharing my screen so we can see our panelists and uh, begin quickly addressing the questions, the wonderful questions we have um, from our attendees. Uh, what we can do is begin with the questions that Heather would like to address. Thank you so much for being here, Heather. And if you can just quickly begin. After that, we can um, let Ekin answer the questions and then we'll just see how much time we have. Hey, thanks, Kiati. So I had marked as a question here about where are recent alumni employed and what do most students do after graduation? And the first thing I'd like to say to that is they, there isn't really a most students in Comlead. We have people from so many different backgrounds that are, have so many different career goals that um, I wouldn't have enough time in a full hour to say the types of jobs that everybody is doing. So I'll, I'll describe it in three main buckets um, where I, I think a lot of graduates tend to fall in. So we have some students who end up working for you know, larger corporations like Amazon, Boeing, Microsoft, Starbucks, um, these kind of big corporations that have a communication department. And so students might do, you know, social media or digital communication in that. They might do more traditional marketing um, roles in that kind of environment. But that's one type of job people might do is in that larger company um, focusing on a communication role. We also have a number of graduates who work for communication agencies um, or public relations agencies. So we communication would be a good example of that or um, Edelman, those kind of PR firms um, or different you know, boutique um, uh, agencies that really do the communication work for other companies that don't have their own communication department. So that kind of agency work is where some students might land. And then we have students that are creative professionals, uh, freelancers, entrepreneurs, who kind of do their own thing. So they might be a photographer or a filmmaker, um, they might be a graphic designer, and they've gone through the program to learn how to market their work and their skills um, in a you know, broad, very you know, um, populated communication field and how to stand out in that. So there are many other things that students do that don't fit into one of those, but I'll just start with those as kind of three types of, of roles that a student might take upon graduating and definitely invite um, our alumni and the program to, to chime in too. And I think I'm next just to answer a question that I called out. Um, 
Uh, Abdul Rahman asked a, a very thoughtful question about how we're incorporating anti-racism as a department and also in UW as a whole, any examples would be helpful. So again, we maybe this will be a theme, but we uh, approach it from different levels. Um, in our course content, power relations, building anti-racist work practices, equity initiatives is the content area of a number of uh, existing and recent courses. Um, and these courses, again, like with other courses that many of our community members today discuss, very much bring in professionals and people that are tackling these challenges in their organizations with an agenda also an eye towards building the next generation practice. So uh, anti-racism and, and creating an anti-racist organization is a subject matter of some of our courses and I'll actually drop the link of our course list as well so you can kind of uh, see uh, the types of courses that uh, we have uh, coming up this year, but before too, you can search uh, across time. Um, but in addition, uh, one of the very important things, and this is a question that came up when Tori was talking, I just wanna reiterate the fact that we not only have uh, classes, but we have a number of uh, public events uh, that are open to professionals. So we're a hub of thinking for global professionals across uh, professions that relate to communication. I also wanna be mindful that uh, like today we claim a lot of spaces as uh, uh, you heard uh, from Tori and Megan, they're doing really interesting work across context from UX to science, communication and storytelling. Uh, our community is a, a diverse set of professional practice interests. So to bring those individuals, we do a number of public events. And just this September, we did a, a series, a three-part series called Transforming Silence into Action. Some of you may have been part of those series um, that we collaborated with uh, equity advocate Tori and uh, Jody and Burry and uh, with uh, Simplicity Consulting, where we basically uh, curated a public conversation from current practitioners in communication and marketing about how they're trying to make sure that anti-racism is in the DNA of their organizations and of their work. Um, so we make that uh, we made that conversation widely available and um, that was also another hub. But the university itself also across context is one of the um, uh, top global universities in the world. Um, it makes this a subject matter, not just in our space, but everywhere. So our students uh, participate in events and conversations and collaborate across context in that as well. So just an FYI, uh, I, I wanted to share that with you. Thank you so much. I believe the other questions that we had in either of the sections have been answered in chat. If there is any question that we haven't been able to answer yet, please, um, please just kind of flag that and we can quickly kind of maybe answer one or two more questions. Yeah, I think I wanted to chime in on, there was uh, one question from Yan Zheng about uh, can foreign students apply to this program? And just want to reiterate, actually about a quarter of our student population are international students who are attending on an F1 visa. And so absolutely, um, we welcome applicants right now. I think uh, last check, it was 12 or 13 different countries represented in the program. So we welcome your, your applications. The only thing to pay attention to is that um, all international students must apply by the February 1st priority deadline, um, just because of the timing for visa processing. Yeah, international student here. <laughs> um, yeah, and I think there's one more question about um, the application. Well, like I said earlier, Haley, what we could do is like, I've, I've shared the link with other info sessions that we have that where current students will talk about things like these, like how to optimize your application, how, what kind of experiences you can kind of look forward to in the program. Even the other question about partner programs and internship opportunities, I think Heather is going to probably write an answer there. But like for more details about that, please feel free to attend the other in, uh, upcoming info sessions that we have where we will talk about all of these in much more detail. Um, yeah. And on, uh, I just wanted to actually quickly to combine uh, maybe one or two questions uh, uh, that, um, so there was a question about finding internships and uh, career support. We have a robust career support service and uh, we have weekly jobs emails, but also a dedicated uh, career consultant that will allow you to also present yourself in the best light possible. Um, to Kyla's question about uh, coming from a TV background. Uh, so already a storyteller, how to use the program. Uh, imagine our program not just as the skills that are necessary to tell stories, but also the sensibilities, the values, 
values, and then the multimodal and multi kind of layered ways of uh, understanding stories in that realm, but also issues like advocacy uh, and um, and building communities across contexts and movements too. Again, uh, Kyla and everyone else, feel free to reach out to us um, with specific questions or any other sessions just so that we can cover these and uh, dive deeper as well. But I just wanted to quickly chime in. Yeah, thank you. I just want to be mindful of everyone's time here. So what I can do is I will be around for like another few minutes. If you have more questions, I can definitely address them. But for anyone who really has to like log off, please feel free to. I just don't want to keep anyone waiting. Thank you so much, everyone. This was this is wonderful. I'll also join Kayati in waiting. So I'll answer questions as well that we haven't gotten to, but thank you all uh, to our panelists and to those of you um, who joined us today as well. Thanks for having us. Bye everyone. Bye -bye. Thanks so much. Thank you. So again, actively, some of us remained online and uh, we're going to actively answer your questions. Um, I see a couple ones. Uh, so uh, about Abdurrahman's questions about transitioning to teach, uh, teaching online and how it impacted our students' lives. Actually, we just shared uh, a, a, a recent post about uh, experiences across context about uh, how we navigated online spaces across uh, classes and experiences and events. Uh, so I am going to share that with you now in the chat box as a link for, for those who are watching maybe after the fact. Um, uh, we, that will be, that's also available on our website, but I'm answering your question with that link, uh, Abdurrahman. Um, Anita, maybe this is a question uh, that uh, you may be able to tackle with. Michelle asks uh, that, um, I know that communication and storytelling is an essential part of the program. Are there any concentration on analytics, consumer insights, and how to use data to better serve your audience as uh, working with all our faculty? Uh, maybe if yeah. you could share a couple. No, I'm happy to do that. In fact, there's a class this quarter called Communicating with Data, and it's taught by uh, um, someone who worked for many years uh, with Tableau, and it, based in Seattle, she was their director of marketing, Elisa Fink, and, and so that's just one of a number of classes that we offer in any given academic year that, that encourages students to think not only about the way in which we gather data, but then how to tell a persuasive story based on that data. And when you look at the, at, if, if you take some time to review our website and look at the program overview, along with the courses page, which gives you an excellent opportunity to look, as Ikin said, at, at all of our classes across years, I would spend a little bit of time looking at the way we describe the specializations within our curriculum, because there are eight curricular specializations that are a way for our students to make sense of the way that we create the curriculum to be able to address the various professional communication areas of interest that we know our students have and that will prepare them to be competitive in job markets when they graduate. And the marketing and analytics specialization is particularly one that calls out this, this need for us to, to create curricular offerings that, that prepare our students in this way. And so doing a bit of, um, of investigation in the way that we in the way that we design those specializations, how that also allows our students to be able to market themselves as they graduate, as having had a particular degree, a master of communication, but also to be able to then say that you've achieved certain specializations based on class clusters that you've taken during your time at Comlead. The page also has some tremendous um, examples of. Uh, mock schedules for a, both a part-time and a full-time student. So it's really useful as you're considering graduate school, what it might look like and what a roster of classes that would align with certain interests that you have. But certainly when it comes to these data classes, the, the feedback that I've gotten from students who've been part of these classes is that it not only demystifies the way that data can sometimes be 
it, for, for audiences that perhaps have a reaction to quantitative data, it, 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 it finds, it, it helps our students find language and also the kind of mechanism by which they want to tell stories based off that data. Um, we also have a great class on decision science and, and that also I think is a form of analytics when it comes to the way in which humans make decisions, the kind of choices that they make, how that informs marketing. So quite a number of classes that would allow you to really take a deeper dive into the kind of choices we make based on data. And I think we have one or two more questions. And uh, uh, so, um, um, uh, just oh, they were all answered actually. <laughs> all the questions were very quickly answered. So um, yeah, I think Jazz the, just answered them for us. Oh, oh yes, great. Jazz, thank, thank, thank you. This is a uh, so um, so yes. So thank you again uh, for joining us um, today, uh, and thank you, Jazz, yes, for that quick pivoting. And again, as I was mentioning, to this session is recorded, and we recorded it till the end. So if you were um, um, if you have joined us a little bit later and asked us questions now. Uh, maybe some of it might be in the earlier part of the session, which we'll make available and share with you. Um, and for those of you who, are, uh, wa who watched the recording, thank you for watching the recording as well. So uh, mindful of all sorts of audiences in this online environment. Um, again, I wanna thank you, all of the panelists and Kayati Mehta who sp speaks to you and is a representative to the wonderfulness of our graduate students in, uh, in imagining uh, uh, events and spaces and interacting with you. So thank you, Kayati, for making today possible. And uh, thanks to all of you again for joining us and have a wonderful uh, rest of your day. And please feel free to reach out to us with any questions uh, throughout the application process. We're here for you. Have a good day. Thank Bye, you so everyone. much. Thanks, Kayati. Thanks, Ken. Thanks, Thank Heather. you for making Thanks, the Jazz. time. Thank you so much, everyone.